we all know as Manchester United fans how important it was and still is for our club to get this summer transfer window right. We've wasted over a billion pounds. Richard Arnold went as far as to say the money was burned. It basically was. We've wasted so much money in transfer windows because we've had poor strategies. And this summer with Eric Ten Hag, nobody really knew what the strategy was. But I tell you what, it's become abundantly obvious now, I think, what that strategy is for Eric Ten Hag. And I want to run through it in this video. I want to explain it to you and why it's obvious now at this point that he's going for players that he feels he can trust. And why clearly that's probably the fundamental reason we're in for the likes of Frankie de Jong, Anthony and Lissandro Martinez. I'll explain it all in this video. Please, if you do enjoy it by the end of the video, Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV. Go down there, hit the subscribe button. Why not? It's free. Hit the notification bell and you get a ping every time I go live with a video as well, just like this one. But let me explain my point of view on this and you can let me know what you think in the comments. But if we rewind to sort of, what was it? Middle of May, early May. This is from James Ducker from The Telegraph. And this is when stories about Eric Ten Hag's transfer strategy first came out. And we heard that he was after two midfielders a versatile forward and a center half. That was the strategy in terms of the players we were going to sign. But who were we going to sign? Well, since then, we've seen a madness, haven't we? I did a video on it yesterday, a bit tongue in cheek. We literally have been linked with, uh, with 100 plus players this summer. It, it's, it happens every year. It happens every summer. But there's, obvious, there's one obvious player who is top of that list. And I, you don't need me to tell you, but that is Frankie de Jong. Now, despite the difficulties with the negotiations with Barcelona that's been going on, despite how long it's taken, we haven't budged. We haven't looked elsewhere. I was going to, I was planning on doing a video on Frankie the Young alternatives that we we're looking at, but I don't think the club are looking at anybody else in that position apart from Frankie the Young. Now, I'm going to do a separate video on this, and I've always said I'm going to, but I'm only going to do it after the fact when we've got the Young, because I know he's going to be a transformative signing. Because for Eric Ten Hag, he sees him as more than just a signing, more than just a midfielder. He is really going to be the general inside that midfield that really gets his system executed. And that is a fundamental reason why trust is such a big part of Ten Hag's transfer strategy. Now, you might think that's short-sighted. You might think that's wrong. We should be looking at all the data. We should be looking at all the numbers. We should be looking at all the players. And if you take a look at who we've been linked with previously, going into this summer, Probably Pau Torres, he was, he was a name that was definitely on Manchester United's list in terms of work that our scouts had done. And certainly Christopher Nkunku was a player that Ralph Randnick had recommended for Manchester United. But what have we seen in terms of both of those players being, being linked with the club this summer? It's all gone a bit quiet on the Western Front. Instead of us going after Nkunku, we go back to what we heard from James Ducker in May. The Manchester United wanted that versatile forward, and that's why on paper... Even more so than Darwin Nunez, the idea of Christopher Nkunku made a lot of sense. But nothing has really happened until the last few days now. Not it's not as if this is the first time that we've heard about Anthony to Manchester United, but this is when we, it's really started to accelerate. And that's what I mean when I say the transfer strategy has really come into the surface now. We've waited and we've waited and we've waited. We've taken too long with Frankie de Jong. We've got ourselves involved in a complicated set of negotiations with Barca's financial difficulties. With the, with the rules that they've got on them from the Liga and how much they can reinvest in players. It's just not a straightforward deal. It's not like a Haaland release clause. And that's what happens when you get involved in a situation where a club doesn't want to sell a player, a player doesn't even want to move, really, and you still want that player. That's how much Ten Hag wants that player. Even though a lot of the things are against the United going into trying to sign Frankie de Jong, we are still trying everything to get him. And that's because, as I said, and I would explain this video, the trust. But when it comes to Anthony... It kind of goes against this concept there that you heard about with a versatile forward. Anthony is not a versatile forward in any way, shape or form. If you were to take a look at his career stats to date, you're seeing over here he's had 97 appearances at right wing. He's had, what, one as a second striker, six on the left wing, four on left midfield and two on right midfield. 97, 90 plus percent of his appearances in his career have come on the right wing. That's not really a versatile forward. Is that a change in strategy? You could potentially argue that, but maybe the strategy was never clear all along because now that we're looking at La Lissandro Martinez, not Lautaro Martinez, two very different Martinez players. Martinez we're looking at because we can't go after Yuri and Timber. 
I think he's probably, I mean, he is. He's a second choice for Eric Ten Hag. And for, for some of you, I've, I've seen it in, in uh, quite a lot of the live streams, and some of you are commenting, why are we just going after Ajax players, Sam? Is this not a, a short-sighted way to look at things? Surely, uh, as a manager coming into our club, we should be looking elsewhere. But I'll tell you one thing that we, let's be honest, we don't have any trust in this summer, our scouting department, right? So if the likes of Pau Torres, if the likes of Christopher and Kunku were both on our scouting list, the list <laughs> which has been sacked, Jim Lawler and Marcel Bau, our two chief scouts, both been sacked. We don't particularly have a scouting department. So it looks like the transfer strategy in terms of targets that we're identifying, Eric Ten Hag is leading the voice on that. And as he should, as the manager. Now, that might make me sound like a hypocrite when I said that previously we need continuity. So we, it's continuity. So we can't just go out and sign all the players like Mourinho wanted. He got Matic, he got uh, Lukaku, he got Pogba. We just we became the Space Jam villains, didn't we? And all of a sudden, when he left, there were players there that didn't really suit that. Now, Eric Ten Hag is building a system at United and he's being afforded clearly, in this first window anyway, the opportunity to make long-term strategy signings. And that's why he's going after the likes of Lissandro Martinez. That's why he's going after the likes of Anthony. That's why he's going after the likes of Frankie de Jong. Three players who know his system inside out. And three players who can execute it perfectly. If we go back to look at that team from 2018-19. Where those players are now. I think this is a quite interesting um, graphic that was made by Bleacher Report. Uh, look at the clubs they've gone to. De Ligt going to Juve. De Jong going to Barca. Obviously, Donny van der Beek. Everton on loan. He'll be back here. Ziyech. That team there was a team that Eric Ten Hag could trust. The team there that's just won the 2022 title was a team that he felt he could trust. And if there's one thing that Eric Ten Hag values, it's trust and the teamwork that it can create. We go back here to the video I did on Eric Ten Hag's philosophy. And this is when he's talking about the importance of teamwork. With an inbound, uh, where we have a lot of people trained. And then the action, of course, uh, Hakim with Quincy. And then I got two Sander in betrokken. Uh, yeah, loop actions, uh, the field setting. And uh, here the 1 2 uh, Quincy with Dusan. And there the third man. Yeah, the third book, the plate. Why is this typical Ajax? Yeah, this has so much free volatility in. But well, on the basis of samenspel. The foundation is teamwork. Eric Ten Hag's words there, not mine. That is something that he's really going to be focusing on bringing to Manchester United. Because if we take a look at how Eric Ten Hag plays, we know what it is, man. We know it's the 4-2-3-1 system. We know how he plays in possession. We know how he plays out of possession. We don't know how he's going to bring that system to Manchester United. That's the disconnect that we've got at the moment between Eric Ten Hag coming in as an army manager and taking over this squad of players. That is why we are looking at the likes of Frankie de Jong, of Anthony, and of Lissandro Martinez. Three former Ajax players, two of two current Ajax, well, yeah, two current Ajax players, one former, all who have worked under Eric Ten Hag, all of which he can go, you know what, I can trust that player to implement my system. We are making system signings, not club signings. Now, again, it might make me sound like a hypocrite because I'm saying that's kind, of, that's kind of going against what I've said previously. But if we're, if we're fully back in the idea of Eric Ten Hag as a long-term vision, and we've got to this time because this will take some time. The, the mess that he's come into with this squad and the idea that he wants to get it playing like that team did at Ajax, that will take time. And what speeds up that process massively is signing players who know how to play in the system. And it's obvious that that's the strategy that's been um, allowed to form itself at the club this summer. I think if when we, when we were going into the summer, John Murto and whoever else, we, they had their list of players. Pau Torres was probably high up that list. Christopher and Kunku were probably high up that list. But since Eric Ten Hag's come in, he's changed the focus of where we're looking. Frankie de Jong has taken over the focus. And it's that trust, the foundations of teamwork, which he needs for his system to work, what is the best way of making that happen? It's looking at players that you've managed, that you know, 
that have executed your plan before. Now, I'm going to, um, I might do a video in the future questioning whether that's the right thing to do. In, in terms of, I'm not that I'm trying to like spew negativity on it, but there's been people in the comments that, on the live streams, so kind of fair, fair enough, saying, why is Eric Ten Hag looking at just raiding his, own, his old club, Ajax, his former club? Why is he not looking elsewhere? Surely there are system signings that he can make from elsewhere. Yes, but in the short term and the long term, the short term right now, signing these players like De Jong, Martinez and Anthony brings this system in far quicker. It speeds up the process. Next season, without those signings, if we were to sign on Kunku, we'd have to learn the Ten Hag system. Obviously, he got foundations at Leipzig that would have been similar, but he wouldn't know the ins and outs of it. That's why I understand what Ten Hag is trying to do this summer. That's why I understand why De Jong really is the key to all of it working and why we've gone after him. And also why we've kind of gone a bit quiet on the likes of Pau Torres on Christopher and Kunku. Maybe we'll go back in for them. Don't particularly think we will. I think it's obvious that we're focusing, focusing on former Ajax players at the moment. But if Ajax don't want to sell, what do we do? That's an interesting point. But I think that just comes down to money. Well, we know at that point United will probably fall at that hurdle. But I wanted to speak about that because I think it's become abundantly clear where the strategy has come from. We, this has always been the case. We, we've been after two midfielders. Versatile forward, maybe, or maybe Anthony, and a centre-half this summer. But it's obvious now why we're looking at, uh, out for certain players and the fundamental reasons and justification as to why Ten Hag is doing that. Because he wants that trust and he wants that teamwork. What better way to get that than with players that he knows can use his system? I wanted to do this video, but I'll be interested to know where you stand on this one. I think it's quite an interesting conversation and debate as to whether it's a smart thing to do. But you can let me know in the comments as you always do. And make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new. Take it easy. See you soon.